The real beauty of the dimensional analysis solving process it is very evident when you try to do a conversion of, of a rate. Uh, rate is going to be, for some examples that we have here, like miles per hour, meters per second, feet per second, gallons per month, where you have some sort of a measurement per something. In each of these examples, we have kind of a, a compound unit. If we think about 55 miles per hour, what that really means is 55 miles in one hour. So if we wanted to think about miles per hour, that word per always means divide. And we can use that to set up what we kind of a compound unit. You're going to have a unit on top and a unit on the bottom. In this case, we want to convert 55 miles per hour into meters per second. Now, keep in mind here, we've kind of changed two different things, right? We've ch we need to change miles into meters, but we also need to change hours into seconds. So really, we just need to deal with each of these units one at a time. We're going to follow the dimensional analysis process of making sure that the units line up and then cancel out appropriately and leave us behind with the units that we want for our solution. So we need to change the miles to meters and we also need to change the sec hours into seconds. Doesn't really matter which one you start with. I'm going to go ahead and start with miles. So I'm going to create a unit fraction here that's going to go between miles and meters. Uh, right now miles is on the top so the miles will need to go on the bottom so that those will cancel out and leave me behind with the meters that I'm hoping to change to. Now I don't know the number, the conversion factor between miles and meters so let's go and see if we have something on our little handy table up here. Alright, so we're looking for miles and meters. Uh-oh, I don't have anything that goes between miles and meters. Here I have miles and feet. Here I have miles and kilometers. And then I can go from kilometers to meters. So uh, we can actually use a pair here to do that uh, finished conversion that we need. So let's go through and, and use that, I guess. So one mile is 1.609 kilometers. So let's change here. One mile is 1.609 kilometers. And that will get the, me to kilometers, and I don't want kilometers, I want meters. So I need to go from kilometers to meters. Again, the kilometers are on top this time, so I'm going to put them on the bottom to cancel out. And from the chart there, I learned that, that in one kilometer there were 1,000 meters. And that gets my kilometers to cancel. So now what I've got is I've been able to once I resolve all the numbers here using our processes that we've talked about so far, I'm going to be left with meters on top, but right now I have hours on the bottom, and what I need on the bottom is seconds, because I need meters per second. All right, so what does that mean? Well, it means I'm just going to keep going on my unit conversion um, train here. Um, right now I've got hours on the bottom, and I need to get rid of hours. So this is really the only place kind of where, where it looks a little bit different. Because the hours were on the bottom, if I want them to cancel, I need the hours to go on the top. So it's, the key thing about the whole unit cancel thing is that one has to be on the bottom and one has to be on the top to get it to cross out. So I put the hours on top this time. I know how many minutes there are in an hour, not how many seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of work my way through. So the hours on the bottom cancel with the hours on the top, and one hour has 60 minutes in it. So now what I have is I have meters from here and minutes here. So not quite done because I need meters per second. So I don't want the minutes. Right now they're on the bottom, so if I want them to go away, they have to go on the top. And now I can do minutes to seconds, which is great. The minutes are going to cancel and leave me with seconds, and I know that one minute has 60 seconds in it. So to finish this problem, uh, notice that on the top, everything has canceled out except for meters. On the bottom, everything has canceled out except for seconds. So my resulting solution is going to be in meters per second, which is great. That's exactly what I would like to have. All right, so all I have to do is now figure out what the numbers are that will go along with that. So multiply all the way across the top, multiply all the way across the bottom, and then divide. So let's go ahead and do that. When we start here, I'm going to have to do 55 times 1.609 times 1,000, times 1 times 1 gives me 88,495 on the top. And 
And on the bottom, I'll do 60 times 60, which is 3,600. And then I just need to divide to get my final solution. And that gets me, we'll take it to two decimals again, 24.58. And the units that I wanted were meters on the top and seconds on the bottom, and that was left after all the canceling. So 55 miles per hour is the same as 24.58 meters per second. So that's the process that we do for rates. Really just deal with each part of the rate unit one at a time as part of your conversion fraction. And remember that something on top needs something on the bottom to cancel. Let's do a couple of other examples here just to make sure. Here we start out with 150 feet per second, so that means the same thing as 150 feet in one second. I want to end up with miles per hour, so I'm going to multiply by a train of fractions. First, let's deal with the feet. Right now, feet are on top, so feet go on the bottom, and I'd like to change from feet to miles. And if you remember from the chart, we've done this one before, uh, there we, we do, oops, we do know how many um, miles and feet go together. Uh, in one mile, there are 5,280 feet. That gets the feet to cancel, and it gets me to miles on top, which is the unit that I want. So I want to keep that up there and not cancel it out. Right now, I have miles on top and seconds on the bottom, and that won't do. So I'm going to keep on going. Oops. So I'm going to multiply this time by... Um, Another fraction, I want to go from seconds to hours, so that's kind of tricky, so I'm going to go from seconds to minutes first. Seconds are on the bottom, so I'm going to put seconds on the top this time. And I'm going to go to minutes, because that's one that I know. Uh, there's 60 seconds in one minute, the seconds cancel, and now I have miles per minute, which is getting closer. But I don't really want minutes, what I really want is hours. So to get rid of the minutes that are on the bottom, I'm going to put minutes on the top, and I'd like to change that into hours. And I know there's 60 minutes in one hour. That will cancel the minutes and leave me with hours, and I'm left with miles per hour, which is exactly what I want. So to finish up the problem, I just need to multiply all the way across the top, all the way across the bottom, and divide those two numbers. So to multiply across the top, I'm going to have 150 times 1 times 60 times 60. That gives me 540,000. On the bottom, I'm going to do 1 times 5,280 times 1 times 1. Oh, that was boring. That's just 5,280. And then I can divide. So let's go ahead and do that. 500 and so 540,000 divided by 5,280. And my result is 102.27 miles per hour. So pretty fast uh, when you think of how fast 150 feet per second is. Uh, for the last one, oh, most of the times we're doing some sort of rate. When we think of rates, we think of speeds. Uh, how, f how far or the, a distance per time, but we can have any kind of measurement in measuring how things change. So for example, here we'd be using 15,000 gallons per month. So we can write that as 15,000 gallons in one month. And we'd like to change that into liters per year. So again, two different units. Each one needs to change. The gallons needs to go to liters. The month needs to go to years. We're just going to multiply by a trail of conversion fractions, unit fractions, and uh, make sure that the units all work out. If I want to get rid of gallons, they're on top right now, so they're going to go on the bottom, and I'd like to change them to liters, and I don't know that conversion, so I'll go back to my chart. I'm looking for capacity this time, and I want gallons and liters, so here's one that I can use. One gallon is 3.785 liters, so let's fill that in. One gallon is 3.785 liters, and that gets my gallons to cancel, and it gets me to liters per month now, which is pretty good, but not quite what I'd want. I'd like to go from months to years, and I don't know, and I do know what that is. So if I want to go from months to years, right now notice the month is on the bottom, so this time the month has to go on the top. 
that's going to get the months to cancel and leave me back behind with years. So I'll end up with liters per year. There are 12 months in a year, Oop. 12 months in one year. So that will be my conversion factor that I need to get everything to work out. To finish getting my answer, I just need to multiply across the top and the bottom and see what I end up with. So in this case, I start out with 15,000 gallons. I'm going to multiply by 3.785. That got me to liters, and then I'm going to multiply by 12, um, and that will get me 681,300 divided by 1, because 1 times 1 times 1 gives me 1 on the bottom. So that's 681,300 liters per year as the remaining units after using my dimensional analysis process. So this dimensional analysis is a super powerful process. We practiced on the simpler ones, but the reason that we really wanted to learn it was so that we could do some of these much more complicated pieces just by breaking it down into simpler steps along the way.